Today is a special session. The first session of the month is all about inspiring artist stories. This community is filled with artists from all different genres, different backgrounds, different uh, experience levels, and there's so much we can learn from one another. Because even though we might have different, come from different parts of the world, very often our questions, our struggles, our challenges are very similar. So that's something that we really can learn from one another and be inspired from one another. And hopefully you'll feel, feel that at the end of the session. We are in December month. Happy December. Today is the 1st of December. So this whole new month ahead of you, an important month for creatives. This is an important revenue season, November and December for creatives. So hopefully you've been able to make use of opportunities to create that extra revenue for your business. And if not, then you can start setting systems in place so that you can get traction, especially towards the end of the year when it's this season of giving and gifts and you can use uh, the on and offline spaces to create more flow and uh, traction with your art. So that is December. But I thought before we go into the new year, how can you prepare for your best year ever? Growth is so key when you are a working artist. You want to see growth in everything that you do. Your, your painting that you're making now should be better than the paintings that you made last year. The revenue that you are uh, making should be increasing as you are growing. If you're setting up those structures, you should see increase. And uh, so this is how can you prepare for increase? How can you get really um, uh, look at some details in your business? And next week, we're going to be looking at connecting with your art audience because you are the artist, you make your art, but that connection with your art audience, how do you do that? How can you get more specific about finding just the right people that will resonate with your art? And then preparing your art business for 2022. I think we can all agree that this, you know, these last few years have just turned everything that we used to do upside down. And we've had to find and look for new opportunities to really create uh, business opportunities and uh, the world is changing. Fortunately, we have that online space. So we're going to be looking at how can you prepare yourself for your best year ever in 2022. And then we're going to do another series of live artist uh, website reviews, your artist website being crucial in your communication, your gallery experience, how your audience perceives you and your art. So we're going to be doing another session uh, for artist reviews. So if you want your artist website review, please send me an email. Then we can add you to the list for this session or future sessions. And then at the end of the year, we're going to be relaxing. We're going to be re getting restored and renewed for our new year. So no live session on the 29th. Briefly, my name is Sonia Small here, originally from South Africa, moved to the Netherlands, stayed there for 30 years, now have moved back. So I'm broadcasting from sunny South Africa. We are full on in the summer and uh, enjoying just the nature and the beauty and being close to family again. Uh, I'm an artist. I love everything creative. I've been uh, creating and drawing and painting for as long as I can remember. It's been my big passion, but also my big frustration. Maybe you can relate something that you love doing, but then finding ways that you can actually do it and not just hustle here and there, but being able to do it full time. And maybe in the transition, maybe you are finding ways to do that then you're in the right space because there are all wonderful ways that you can do that. It's not easy. It's not an easy profession, but it is possible. And I teach that in my courses. I do coaching sessions and I have a regular podcast that you can tune into. So head over to my website if you want to find out more uh, because my big passion is to see artists succeed. Artists need to be out there. Your art needs to get out into the world, reach, the, uh, reach people hang on walls, decorate spaces, enhance people's lives, uh, share messages, um, get discussions going, all important things for your art to get out there. And that's my passion, to help you do that. Uh, as I said, head over, head over to my website. If you want to find out more about my working artist course, then please, uh, you'll find that under the tab course. We are opening registration again in February. So we'll be starting with the spring edition of the Working Artist course. It's a 12-week intensive course to help you turn that creative passion, your, you know, your artistry into a revenue stream, setting up those systems, finding out what marketing, promoting, uh, connecting with your art audience, 
all of the things that you can do to get more structured and get more um, joy out of your creativity. And then if you haven't done so yet, then please head over to the free resource all about promoting and selling your art. 10 artists share their top expert tips on how to market and sell, especially in these turbulent times. So you're free to work, to download that. It is a free resource. But you are here in the Help I'm Artist community because you are, you know, wanting to learn, you're wanting to uh, find ways to sell your art, connect with your art audience. This is a community where we help one another. So please feel free to join the conversations throughout the week and in the live sessions. Um, I'm just going to check and see who is here so that I, if I've missed you and haven't been able to welcome you yet, then I just want to see who's here. I uh, see Jan is in the house. Jan is from Almere. Always good to see you. Jess is here. Hello, Jess. Good to have you. And thank you for adding your details. I see Sonia is here. Wonderful uh, that you've been able to join, Sonia. So thank you guys for uh, showing up live. And as I said, today is a special session because other artists are going to be sharing their art stories. And so if you have questions for them, you have, want to encourage them, you want to follow along, then please uh, yeah, use that comment area so that you can interact. And then we'll be looking out, all four of us, for the comments, and then uh, you can engage in that way. Three artists, different genres, different styles, all from the same country, from the Netherlands. So that's what uh, is the binding factor. Keep everyone, uh, that's what the similarity is. Uh, but each has a unique story. So thank you guys for uh, joining me for the session. The first uh, artist I want to invite is uh, Rinke. And uh, she's going to be sharing more about her story. After that, we'll be listening and looking at Elizabeth. And then we're going to be closing the session off with Karin. But first of all, we'll head over to Rinka. I'd love to invite you, Rinka, on and into the session. I'm just going to do some technical uh, steps before I can invite you up. Hello, everyone. Rinka. Hi. Welcome to this uh, live, live session. Wonderful to be able to connect with you in this way. Please let people know a little bit about you. Who are you? Where are you? And what kind of art are you making? Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me, inviting me to this session. I was looking forward to it. Um, my name is uh, Rinke Struik. I live in Deventer in the Netherlands. I was born in the west side of the country. Um, and, well, actually, my whole life I've been drawing and painting. And since around the year 2000, I've been working as a professional artist. And the kind of art I make is uh, mainly contemporary art. Uh, I would also call it zero art in a lot of ways. And of course, meta art, maybe sometimes a little minimalistic. It's a combination of, of uh, different kinds of arts. Okay. And, and just describe, you said it's met art, you say? Matter. 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 I use different kinds of matters. I don't only use paint, but mm -hmm. I use uh, nails, rivets, uh, flat moss, leaves, paper. Um, this is all different kind of materials to okay. produce my so art. The different matter. So different, uh... different matter, yes. Oh, I get you, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, not a problem. <laughs> I just thought I'd explain uh, that. And uh, did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? Is this something that you grew um, up with? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, it, it wasn't really something um, when I grew up. It was more. It wasn't really a job. <laughs> I had to go and study something different to get a job. Mm -hmm. And um, um, yeah, so I, I, my career is had also a different path, but I always stayed uh, into the painting and my art. And um, so it, I always found it difficult though, because I didn't get the, the scholar training to be an artist. So therefore I um, um, was, was uh, uh, yeah, also working in different kinds of business. To, to make money, to pay the rent, to mm -hmm. say it's simple. And yeah. um, 
yeah, at the moment, the last couple of years, it's only my art. Okay, so I you made the transition, it. being a you know professional in another area, to be a full-time working artist. That's right. That's, yeah, I think a lot of artists in this community have that same dilemma. It's like, when do you take that that uh, step to become a professional and really to earn your solo income with your art? Can you just yeah, tell us a little? Yeah, because you know the, the problem is when you um, also focus on a different career. It's, it's really difficult to, um, when you want to be a true artist, you really need the time and your attention to just to just be busy with your art and uh, find your clients and know your market and also be able to uh, grow and develop in your art. I mean, I'm not making the same things I was 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that changes and, and if you don't, and if you work, you don't paint enough and you don't work enough. So it's really important to, um, to make time. And it's not mm -hmm. just sitting there in a bar with red wine and a beret on your head to get inspiration. <laughs> you just have to start working every day in your studio. Yeah. Start okay. working. That's the Amazing. most important thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And when was that decision for you? Is it, was it more like you scaled down your other job and then sort of scaled up your art to well, find actually it was it was uh, um, after a, a personal well, a, a medical event actually. It was mm -hmm. sort of like the universe hit me on the hammer with a head, and uh, I wanted to do everything. I had a busy job, and um, so after that, I had to make a career change. And I couldn't go back to, to my old jobs. It was really busy jobs, high management jobs. And so I decided, you know what? I think I just got a hint. <laughs> mm -hmm. And maybe it's time to just proceed my art career. So mm -hmm. more full time. I always sold art and worked in art and, and gave workshops and did always something with art. And uh, now I'm doing that just full time. Yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about our, your art? I see some behind you in that beautiful yes. space. <laughs> just love to just the flat walk moss. Uh, wait, I have to go the other way. It's it's on on uh, for the viewers. I think on the left side. It's on my right side. Mm -hmm. And the other one over there is uh, paper on acrylic and on nails. Mm. Yes, so how do and you more in the background as well. Yeah, that's, how does that work? How does your process work? What inspires you? And then you turn that into the, the paper or turn it into the different matter that you're using. You just invite us into your world. Yes. Um, well, years ago, I worked in a sort of building construction, with the window frames construction, and I got in contact with um, uh, construction materials. Mm -hmm like rivets and nails and, and, and lead. And at that time I was working more robust and, uh, but I loved um, empty old buildings. Um, um, you know, when, when it's, uh, what's the English, English word? Um, I was sorry, I, I was trying to look for my Google Translate. Um, <laughs> Good old Google. <laughs> yes, so I have my, my little iPad next to me. So it's like expired buildings, you know, the old buildings. And I liked it when it when it was worn down. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was trying to create in my old works, uh, like with the old lead and old paper and more more earth tones with browns and, and uh, ochre and that kind of colors. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of developed um, uh, on my walks with my dog when i start to find things and see things in nature the leaves and uh, uh stretch you find on the fields when the farmers uh, dig up the the, the earth yes, you find the, uh, the little pieces and i start collecting everything and i always brought everything home and at one point i felt like organizing it and I think that's the sort of way it, it was created. And then, of course, I'm inspired by the Zero Movement of artists mm. in the 1958, 60s. Yeah. You had um, a 
couple of um, zero artists who started the zero movement in Düsseldorf. And um, they used a lot of white. And uh, yeah, I was drawn drawn to that. Mm. Do that make oh, sense? Yes, yeah, totally. <laughs> it's so interesting. Uh, just some things should uh, uh, jump to mind, Arinka. What is it that you want your audience to feel or experience when they come to an exhibition or when they encounter your art? What do you hope people are conversing and experiencing? Well, actually, the art I'm making the last uh, couple of years, I would say the last eight years, um, it combines the things I love. And it, it's, it's the, the, the combination of nature, technology and harmony. Because you order it and you use uh, uh, natural colors like uh, the flat moss, um, the greens um, and the leaves. And the leaves I paint mostly white. It, it becomes the harmony in the repetition of, of, of things. You know, the way I put them on the nails. Mm -hmm. It gives a sense of peace. So at the same time, um, um, it is maybe... Um, well out uh, well thought out and ordered but at the same mm -hmm. time it's warm because i use also the space inside the room it's not a flat painting because i use the nails and mm -hmm. some and the leaves is stick stuck on the nail and when the sun travels through the room you see the shadow of the work and the work changes yeah so uh, and 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 that's what i like that people have something in their room with, which keeps, gives them peace and at the same time um, um, stay fascinated. Fascin mm -hmm. And actually it's just, you know, paint is just paint and the leaf is just the leaf. It doesn't pretend to be anything else than, than just a leaf. That's what I like. Yeah. So you're actually ordering, ordering uh, bringing order to chaos. And you're That's adding right. elements of light and repetition, composition. You are editing and curating and putting that in a space. And because I see in some of your lovely work, they're actually in boxes. So you frame them. They're not flat. They, it's three-dimensional, more sculptural. And then so the elements around the space also add to the conversation. That's right. Uh, and at the same time, it's kind of silly to do the, a thing like that because nature already has a beautiful harmony and... Mm -hmm. and um, uh, sometimes it looks like chaos, but it's not. Mm. <laughs> it's 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 a perfect harmony, mm. and um, so and at the same time it it's it's about contrast because you have the softness of the leaves or the softness of the Japanese paper I use, and at the same time I put it in a plexiglass box. Mm. So when I talk about this work behind me, uh, uh, the flat moss in a plexiglass box. The yeah. title is I lay my head to rest and maybe, you know, the feeling when you walk in a forest and you see the moss and you think, mm -hmm. wow, you know, it would be lovely just to lay there for a sec. Yeah. And um, um, but it becomes a bit not not such a good idea when you see the plexiglass. So, yeah. but what, you know, so it's it's about. Um, yeah, it makes, yeah. 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 Interesting. Uh, I think. For people to go to your website too and also to your instagram they can have a closer look and really zoom into all your lovely works and yeah, I don't because my facebook is mainly a, a private page and okay. i use my social media uh, my website and my instagram for my work for your words right okay. people can uh, please add, when we end the conversation you can add your url to the comments so people can if you haven't done so yet people can go and have a look at, uh, at your work yeah, and you nice. are you are an exhibiting artist, so do you have anything going at the moment where people can come and I'm, have a look? I'm again in contact with um, galleries, but you maybe heard that in the Netherlands there is another uh, lockdown. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in the middle of an exhibition in March 2020, and well, that's something I struggle with at the moment because we had to close down early, mm -hmm. and I haven't had an exhibition since. Mm -hmm. um, it's because all the artists who were waiting at the time for an exhibition were sort of, you know, waiting and yeah. they were already promised the exhibition. So everything 
moves up. Yes, um, the other thing is um, I'm uh, with the fair, the art fairs are, are going to be organized again. So hopefully uh, next uh, spring mm -hmm. I will be on, uh, okay. joining in some art fairs again. Yeah, I just I'm just signing up at the moment for some. Okay, how have you navigated these uh, challenging times? Uh, because you're a working artist, this is your revenue stream. How do you go about marketing for, you know, yeah. for get, looking for opportunities? Do you have any tips that you can share? Yes. Well, um, it, my work takes a time before it's ready. I cannot, you know, make a work in one day because it takes time to collect the leaves, to dry the leaves, to order the leaves, uh, to prepare, you know, it's, it's sometimes it will take a month. So I'm not often posting on Instagram and I'm looking for that, how I can, you know, sometimes I make a post about my process or my studio. And at the moment I'm uh, uh, thinking of creating because I saw during the first uh, period of the pandemic that a lot of galleries and art fairs like Frisa Art and, and um, those I follow, they had, um, how do you call it? Uh, their fair online yeah virtual exhibitions virtual exhibitions yes yeah. so at the moment i'm creating a virtual exhibition uh it takes the time because at the moment i'm looking for uh, a room where i can hang everything and then uh, i will ask someone to film it and i will make it a virtual exhibition okay. and yeah. for mailchimp i will uh, invite uh, people who I already okay. have on my list. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. one of the tips I can I can share with everyone. Make yeah. it a virtual uh, exhibition because yeah. my work is difficult just to make it a photograph because you see it shines. You get yeah. the reflection of the other things in the room, yeah. and um, so it's difficult to make photos. And if you film it, you can see it three dimensional. Yeah, yeah. You need that extra dimension. For uh, that's right, full experience, yeah. So, you have a list. I saw that you said that you send the invitation to a list, so you do send emails to a list. No, so you... no, 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 I wish, <laughs> I <can't> wish. <laughs> not <laughs> yes. yes. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in search of self at that <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I find it difficult to because if you start with a newsletter or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have news mm -hmm. and um, yeah so yeah to get the content you're really struggling mm -hmm. for Instagram too and your newsletter what content can you right. share yes. for the audience yeah. yes and do it on a regular base yes, yeah well I think uh, Rink, if I just see your Insta feed what you've posted and your just the aesthetics and your photography and it has such a lovely feel it just brings so much peace I think if you just take your camera and make shots that already brings so much value so that you don't have to find and look too far that it's actually quite, quite close to you and just a little snippet to your audience on a regular basis can go a long way so I just want to Thank encourage you encourage you with that because you have you know such a lovely aesthetic that's uh, yes and i will follow your um uh, site and what, welcome to hopefully yeah when it comes to the marketing part i'm there there we go there we go <laughs> and also when you get your virtual exhibition up and running just add the url in the group because then we can uh, follow along i'd love that's to right. see oh, that would be nice yes yeah well, one final question and i'm going to just ask uh, the uh, people in the comments, uh, in the uh, audience, if they have a question for Rinka, then just quickly add them to the comments uh, while I ask my last question. Uh, Rinka, artists that inspire you, uh, are the artists that you can share with us and you can add them to the comments for later so that we can look around and see? Yes. Um, well, I mentioned before the Zero Movement, Nullkunst in the Netherlands, um, and of course, uh, when it comes to the Dutch artists uh, Jan Schoonhoof and Henk Peters. Uh, Herman de Vries uh, leeft nog, he woont in Duits. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking Dutch. Um, <laughs> I didn't even let's notice. do this again. <laughs> oh, sorry, you didn't even notice. Um, no, I'm talking about uh, the Dutch uh, art movement, zero artist, Nulkunst. 
And I was talking about the Dutch artist in there. It was Jan Schoonhoven and Herman de Vries still alive. He lives in Germany at the moment. He is a great inspiration. I just absolutely adore his work. And of course you had uh, Lucio Fontana, uh, Manzoni, uh, Yves Klein. Those are very, Armando, not to forget. Those are very important artists to me. And uh, on a total different note is Anthony Tapies. He's a, an artist from uh, Catalonia in Spain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, he passed away some years ago and he made beautiful, beautiful um, rough art. And um, he used a lot of different kind of materials from marble, marble powder and dust. And, and yeah, it's totally different uh, uh, from what I make. Yeah. Um, but his, his boldness and uh, the way he worked and the way he lived with his art is a great inspiration. Exciting name. I love hearing about different artists. So please, if you can just add your list quickly to the comments or will, you know, when we finish the session, then we can Google and just go and be feasting, especially because everything's closing down again. We can just use that space and be inspired. So Dinka, thank you so much for uh, joining in the session and generously sharing just your process and your beautiful art and just your person. Thank you for uh, being prepared to do that. Well, thank you um, for having me. I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to my uh, other two colleagues and yes. their story. Yeah. And uh, I like to thank everyone for joining and listening to me. Mm. And then, uh, Rinka, don't forget to uh, have a look at the comments. Maybe there are questions specific for you. Then you can uh, answer them in the uh, comment area uh, in the feed. Okie dokie, I will. Okay. okay. Thank you very have much. Have a good day. Maybe till next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> so that was Rinka. Thank you, Rinka, for uh, joining us uh, from the Netherlands. Please go and have a look at her Insta and her Facebook. Oh, no, Facebook was private. Uh, at her, her website and uh, have a look at it. Have a close look. You can zoom in and see her uh, art. Next up is Elizabeth Fairbake, also from the Netherlands. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's see, am I doing this right? Yes. <laughs> Hi there. Good to have you in the session. Yes, thank you for asking me. Wonderful to be here. What a pleasure, what a pleasure. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, about um, who you are, where you are, and what kind of art are you making? Okay, uh, I'm Elisabeth Fairbeck. Um, I'm from the north of Holland, but I'm uh, living for a long time in Rotterdam, where I'm also working. And uh, I'm an abstract expressionist painter. Uh, so my art is expressive, as the word says. Um, and uh, I'm very much, you could say, inspired like by the, the title of Gauguin's painting. Um, where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? And um, so in my life, uh, I have not only worked as an artist, but also um, uh, I did a lot of intuitive trainings and I'm also a teacher in intuitive trainings and in art. Mm -hmm. So for me, spirituality or personal development go hand in hand with, with art making mm -hmm. and uh, the growing process um, and more specifically also uh, liberation, liberation from uh, uh, limiting beliefs that we have about ourselves and who we can be um, and limiting beliefs uh, um, and um, yeah I, I believe we, we need to liberate also ourselves from from obscurities or uh, that's what's, what is hidden inside us and uh, what we are not um, trained to, to bring outside actually so mm. I feel that often we become too insecure or uh, in other ways uh, limited. And um, this process of growing personally is what drives me in my art. Mm. Interesting. Elizabeth, before we go into zoom in onto your pieces, and I see them wonderfully behind you, uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, the beginning of uh, your art, your yes. 
desire to be an artist? Was it something that you learned as a child? Were you already busy with expressing yourself? How did that sort of come about for you? Yeah. Um, I think in my in my teens, uh, when in school, I already did a, like a drawing course. Uh, so I was uh, already interested in that direction of creativity and drawing. But I must say that personally, I I think I didn't feel free enough in that time to um, express myself in the way that I would like. So I first started uh, just working after school a few years. And when I was 21, I made a shift and I went to the Willem de Koning Academy in Rotterdam. And uh, so I went there for a few years, um, but there I felt already that uh, the personal side of the artists was so important to me that I decided to go further by my own mm. and uh, continue my path, uh, learning myself. And uh, um, yeah, so I painted, I think, uh, about uh, 10 years intensively. And then um, I started to, to also include the personal growth more and more. Mm -hmm. And um, this resulted actually in uh, making um, more intuitive art. And uh, in, uh, in a few years ago, I felt I, uh, I really want to uh, commit to this abstract side, the abstract painting. Mm. And um, uh, besides the, the teaching, of course, uh, um, there is uh, uh, you could say my my week is always filled. Um, there are not many days that I have time off, which is also maybe my biggest problem uh, um, mm -hmm. as an artist is time management because uh, I want to paint a lot uh, and do the business side and also uh, do the teaching side because I mm -hmm. love to uh, to bring forward actually what I learned in my life to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they have those different pillars in your art business, so you know, yes, art, they just cater. Okay, I don't hear. Yeah, so uh, that can be very challenging. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, 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 next. But just yes. take us through your creative process. It's okay. I, I hear, I don't hear what you're saying. Um, somehow the stream is not really fluid, but I will talk anyway. So <laughs> uh, I hope you can hear me all. Um, my process, yes, I'm, so I paint in a very intuitive way. And uh, um, so my, I believe really that the world we experience it's begins it's inside ourselves so there's actually only one world for me and that's the world that i experience and uh, therefore i feel going inside is an important part of this um i don't see sonia anymore so i have no clue if you can hear me now oh you can hear me okay okay and then i uh, continue and um so the intuitive way uh, brings me back to my soul and uh, I, I like to bring uh, my soul outward. You could say. And um, at the same time, I feel that I tune into the uh, subconscious that is universal. Uh, feeling the energy that is around me it means actually that I uh, am aware of a world uh, in, in big change. So. There's so much going on in this world uh, that I also f believe really that um, um, the soul part is coming to, uh, going to be much more important and um, that we need it to really know who we are and where we stand and um, to, to live uh, further in more harmony and not be affected too much about uh, all the changes that are going on. But at the same time, when I paint, of course, uh, the hectic part of life uh, also, also uh, emerges in my art. So my art is often lively, it is uh, colorful, 
um, yeah, for me it is exciting and uh, sometimes it's a bit more quiet, but uh, in these times often uh, like the raging energy uh, that, that, that we maybe all feel in this time uh, has its place in my art. So I love uh, working in this uh, technique actually because it is liberating in itself and uh, because liberate, liberation is a, is a strong drive for me. Uh, the, the method that I use uh, contributes to that. And um, um, it contributes also to the growing process. So uh, it works both ways for me. And uh, working like intuitively and uh, without a plan uh, ahead, uh, just feeling every in the moment uh, what is what is next what is the next move what is the next gesture because my art is quite gestural feels like the most honest way for me to work mm. elizabeth i don't know if you uh, my uh, internet had a glitch so hopefully everyone was just being able to listen to what you had to say i missed a few of your uh, a part of your story yeah. <laughs> so thank you for just being professional and keep going uh, yeah. uh, can, the painting behind you. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that says, and you know, how, a little bit about your thought behind it? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So it has a. It it comes from a personal change in my life uh, because I was teaching a lot more, uh, and um, in, was very much involved in an intuitive development, and. Uh, Somehow I felt uh, the urge to paint more and paint more abstract coming um, became more important to me. Uh, but with that, other things fell away also. So uh, in that process of change, of transition, uh, yeah, you don't know where you're going. So I didn't know where I was going. I just felt I need to move on. And this painting is called Into the Unknown. Mm -hmm. So you could say, if I look at it, for me, the all the colors with the dark and the, and the brighter colors is like uh, the energy, uh, the personal energy, uh, and it represents also the richness of all that is gained already. Um, and if you look at what is around it, it's a bit like a mist. Yeah, so. It represents the not knowing part for me, mm. which still feels uh, welcoming for me. It feels welcoming, but uh, it can still be scary to, to yeah. take that step. So this is what it is about. Okay. Yeah. And is it acrylics or is it oil? It's in acrylics. I, I always work in acrylics. Mm. And that is because I love to work in a flow. Uh, and uh, I like to work like quickly, so a few hours mm -hmm. intensively painting and then stepping back, letting it all dry and then uh, going for another session. So then in between, of course, I look at my painting mm -hmm. uh, and uh, analyze it more, what it needs, uh, where it needs to go. But when I'm in the flow, uh, then I just follow my intuition and follow the movements. So mm -hmm. these two, um, yeah, go hand in hand, you could say. The, and then I go for another session and I go in the flow again and then I take the distance again. Yeah. yeah. The quick drying time. And the quick the, drying uh, time, yes, okay. definitely. Yes. Yeah. And I know uh, that you love to work big, that that's yes. uh, something that you are uh, looking to do more of, is the, the scale of your work. Um, yes. And that seems quite physical if you, I mean, just have to move I mean, it's not something that you do just with your brush it's something that you really have to move and to you become one actually with your medium and with your yes. with your uh, my whole life. body will move in the in the action yes, yes. 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 everything is. is involved and yeah. it's also all my focus is on the painting i'm really in the in the now and nothing mm -hmm. else is important at that time and mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's all helps <laughs> part of your process yeah. yes uh, we were talking about juggling all those balls that you are you know the entrepreneur you are the artist you are the teacher i know you're yeah. a mom i 
and that you're a wife and you have your, you know, all the different areas. How do you find um, a balance and, and how do you, what do you, what steps are you taking to build your business um, as an artist? Yes. Okay. Well, I am at the moment really working on my time management. So what I, what I noticed is first I had the idea, okay, I need to take photos of my art and then I want to print and I need to work on my website. And there was a whole list, you know, um, and, but I found out that it's better to just focus on one thing and then complete that. And then I go to the next thing. So some some things I just postponed and say it's for a later date. And uh, so I have a whiteboard. I put everything down, all my ideas, so that it's on black and white. You know, I can yeah, always look it. back at it. Yeah. yeah. But then uh, I need to schedule. And um, uh, in the in the time blocking, if I if I look at my calendar. And I give uh, the whole weekend I teach, then I know there's somewhere a day that I need to rest. Mm -hmm. uh, a few days that I mostly I work um, around three days really uh, in my uh, studio and in the rest. And also sometimes in the evenings I uh, plan to work on the, the next step in my business. So. Uh, for me, a, an important step was I needed a better studio, and now I have a better studio. So all my focus was on that, so that I could start painting uh, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. I also have now, uh, I have actually two studios next to one another, so I can teach there. So, uh, yes, the next step, of course, is, is the scheduling uh, of uh, an opening, so I can... Oh, the internet seems to uh, be glitching again. Can you hear me, Elizabeth? Uh, in the meantime, guys, if you've got any comments uh, or any questions for Elizabeth, then please Otherwise, put them in. I would have started at the uh, 19th of December, and now I'm going to do it next month. And uh, yeah, so then I all my focus is on on uh, rearranging that and. Mm. Uh, if that's all arranged, then I go to the next part. Okay, so breaking yeah. it down into small little steps. First, yeah. getting it all now out, what needs to happen, yeah. and then sorting them out, creating yes. a focus point, and then doing that, getting that off the list, and then moving on to the next yes. priority. Yes. Okay. yes. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, but I know that you are active on social media, um, you are using Instagram. You have lovely stories. Uh, you are, you know, a pleasure to follow. So I would advise other people also to uh, follow you on uh, on Instagram. Is there any other place that people can find you and follow you? Well, I am on LinkedIn, but not so very active. So the most active I'm on Facebook and on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, and of course my website. I will post it in the chat. Yes, please. Yes. Your links and your URLs, so people can find you. Also, people in. Rotterdam for uh, your open studios that you're planning. Then, yes, and uh, they can, follow they can write in my uh, newsletter. So okay. if, um, if they join my email list, then uh, I can keep them informed of all my new works, okay. uh, new events. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, thanks. And then lastly, Elizabeth, artists that inspire you. Do you have any names that we can Google or look up or maybe we know that we can... Uh, uh, get some inspiration yeah yes um it's it's actually all more expressive uh, artists and a few are a bit more with also uh, the same interest in awareness and that is like uh andrea eret uh, she's on instagram on uh, andrea circles um, and uh, fernanda rivero she's a mexican uh, artist Mm -hmm. that I really like um, and um, there's an Austrian artist he's very expressive but mm -hmm. uh, yeah what I really love actually in artists if I can see their their strong drive in the in their art so in the way they paint that the, that the strong drive comes forward and that is Dietmar Wulfel 
is uh, is LFL at the end. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> add those names to the uh, to the Euro or to the comments because then uh, we can see the spelling and we can go and search yes. them online. He's from the informal um, informal movement. Um, and another one is an uh, an UK artist that's uh, Ian Ray Smith. Um, and also his boldness, he, the last two both uh, work quite large mm. and um, his bold movements and just if you look at his posts also, it's, it's all radio, it radiates this passion for art. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your world Elizabeth and a little bit about your story. Uh, we'd love to follow along and also uh, please you can add all that goodness to the uh, comment area then we can go and check it I out will. yeah uh, if you have any Thank questions you for asking me yeah, what a what a pleasure elizabeth and if anyone has questions for elizabeth uh, use that comment area or connect with her uh, through the different channels uh, and then you can uh, you can ask away elizabeth thank you thank you have a good afternoon and thank you for being such a pro. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye. So this is like a five course meal hearing all these stories and the inspiration and uh, just being able to chat and connect uh, in a more personal way than uh, just uh, seeing in the comments. It's nice to have you here live in the session. So thank you Rinka and also uh, Elizabeth. And our final guest for this session is uh, Karin. I see you waiting there in the uh, wings and I'm going to uh, welcome you into the session. Hello Karin. Hey, hello. hello. <laughs> Good to nice. see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> it's so much nicer than just apping and, uh, and using social media. Thank you yes. for <laughs> taking the time to, uh, to chat with us this afternoon. And uh, please tell us uh, who you are, where you are, because I know you have a wonderful uh, space where you're working, has quite a story. And tell us a little bit about your art. Yes, I will. After two other inspiring stories of uh, Elizabeth and Rinke. Uh, well, my name is uh, Karin Borst. I live also in the Netherlands, in the southwest of the country, near the, the coast and the sea. And... Um, yeah, I think um, in 2020, when I started the working artist course uh, of Sonia, that was really a point where things, yeah, has changed a lot in my life. <clears throat> Creativity has always been part of me when I was a little child and I chose to uh, follow the education as art therapist. And then I started working in the mental health care and worked there for about 14 years and the last 10 years as a manager. And it was all fine and it was all good, but there was something I was deeply missing and it was time to be uh, yeah, a lot more creative than I, um, <clears throat> yeah, than I could be. So about two, two and a half years ago, I made a decision to, um, yeah, to welcome creativity in my life again. So I made a place in our house. Uh, Sonia told a bit, we live in a very old uh, house, the former house of a blacksmith. So I claimed my own spot and uh, put there all my um, my paintings, my my everything. So I um, <clears throat> had access to, yeah, to create and to paint. And that was really, um, yeah, uh, a key point, I think, in my life because um, it started to grow. And um, I find, yeah, for example, I met Sonia online. I still don't know how exactly uh, she came in my timeline. <laughs> but I start to learn about um, being a working artist, um, started to invest in my own um, development. And so, yeah, I think about two years, I, I had still my, my job as manager, but all my free time went into making art and learning about things, um, get new uh, connections with other people. Um, and then at the end of 2020, I made a decision to quit my job. 
and it's a big, big decision, uh, but I really felt I need to make space and real space to give it a chance. And beside the paintings, I um, developed uh, leadership programs um, with a lot of creativity in it, because I see so many people who have that creative spark uh, inside the, uh, how do you say? Um, they just have it, uh, but along the way, it got disappeared or they, they're not, um, Oh, my English. It's always a challenge. <laughs> Just try those Dutch words and I'll help you. <laughs> oh, <no problem. laughs> so, um, however, the finding uh, your own creativity is a big part in the, the leadership programs as well. And as you learn how to find that creative power, and it's, it's not necessary in paintings or uh writing poems but it's um it's setting it's putting something on fire in your whole life so that's um yeah that is th that that are the things i do mm -hmm. and yeah um so tell well, us about your art uh, uh Kari. <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> well um you're an interior painter. That's what uh, we found. We were looking for. Okay, how are we going to be calling you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, trying to, uh, uh, yeah, just tell us a little bit about your art form and yeah, what motivates you to make your art. We have some sneak peek behind you, but just yeah. tell us a little bit about your process. Yes, I will. Well, creating um, is for me always um, like a free zone. It's a bit like um, Elizabeth shared with us. When I have my paint and my charcoal and my pastels, I the time is uh, I forgot the time and everything um, goes very quick. So I'm really in the moment then, and it's um, a, yeah a, a free zone to play for me. Everything is okay. Um, I can just be who I am, and um, I started to paint uh, the portraits and. When I look back at my uh, study time, there were also um, uh, human figures or portraits. So it's been a, a, a theme that's, um, yeah, that's, that interested me. And I choose to um, focus on this theme. And it was a good thing to do because then you can, yeah, it gives me a sort of structure. So it's the, the, the portraits and within the portraits, I can uh, try, develop, learn. Um, so it's a good form for me to, um, yeah, to paint. <laughs> mm -hmm. You gave it a theme and around that theme you've been working and I know you've, you've taken steps and you've really, I mean, now you're exhibiting all over the show internationally. <laughs> Just yes. take a little bit through that process. How did you get going? Because I think a lot of people have the spark. They have that 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 passion. They want to be uh, creative. But where do you start? What you know? How did you go about building your business? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's all uh, small steps you can take, and uh, some, and it's really like um, you have your art and just make the things you make but without anything else nobody will know nobody can see so your artwork has to go out of your studio and i remember so good the first instagram post it was during our uh, the working artist course and i was so nervous to post it because i thought whoever will be uh, happy with my post or what what can i admit in all the yeah, diversity um, of other artists, but I did, and um, yeah, then then yeah, it started growing, and I participated in um, the hundred day challenge. That was uh, the beginning of two thousand twenty one, and it was uh, really good for me. Um, it was good uh, for my to develop my art, but it was. Um, very good to be bold and keep on sharing. So that was um, uh, another goal for me to step out of uh, my studio and make myself known as an artist. Mm -hmm. So 
So it's all about growing and taking steps. Yeah, you might be um, afraid to, but if you have the courage, I really found find out that it's always been, uh, is that beloved rewarded? Rewarded, yes. Yeah. So then after the 100 day challenge, there was a gallery from Hamburg who um, uh, asked of, uh, if I want to participate in an exhibition this summer. And right now the works are in Milan and Fuerteventura and it's really all thanks to Instagram. It's really the, the place where you find new connections and um, art lovers and galleries and other artists. So the Instagram is really my, my art account and LinkedIn is more for the, yeah, the, the leadership programs and uh, um, yeah, to connect with other leaders who more want to discover in their own creativity. Mm -hmm. So tell um, us a little bit about your Instagram strategy. How Do you have a strategy? Do you have a sort of structure that you have? Uh, how are you posting? How have you? How did those galleries find you? Did you were you taking steps? Just tell us a little bit about how you use the yeah. social media. Yeah, um, maybe I can develop in my uh, strategy, uh, but I um, I do have some um, uh, um, how do you say subjects for myself uh, about uh, what I share. Mm -hmm. So you will not see much of my my family or so it's really focused on the art um, and I'm uh, I'm just a beginner and uh, learning uh, like you can put the, the reels with parts of your um, uh, paintings um, you can show people how the process of your work how it um, yeah where you start and when uh, where you end um, so I'm fully discovering um, at the same time this, um, yeah, the social media and how it can work out for you. And it's also about just trying mm. some things. Um, yeah, you get a lot of response and others, uh, others not. But it's just yeah, taking steps, trying and figure out what works. Mm -hmm. And you can work with uh, certain uh, hashtags uh, uh, in your post to yeah to connect with other uh, other people who follow them. So yeah, it's it's um, it's an interesting media. Mm, yeah, and it's as you say, it's an, uh, trying things out, seeing what works, doing more of what works and less of what doesn't work, and uh, and and building your audience uh, in that way. Yeah. Uh, because I uh, really appreciate your photography too. You've really elevated your art through good photos. Yes, that's so, that's yeah. you invested in uh, good uh, portraits, good uh, uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, I think quality is very important, and um, that's the reason why I choose to work also with a, a photographer for my site. Um, pictures of me but also of my artwork mm -hmm. um, and it's yeah I think all the investments they um, yeah it helps it helps to yeah to make it professional and um, and also to show to your audience that you are taking it seriously it's not mm -hmm. yeah um, so quality is a is a, a value for me so I try to show that yeah yeah and uh, what's some next steps for you i know you've been uh, doing portraits and it's intuitive where are you taking your art do you have an idea of what's on the horizon for you well i um as i told you i went to an art retreat week um just got back from beautiful scotland and this is also investment i it, it i enjoyed it a lot but it was really for my business and for myself and for my art um, so I'm looking for new inspiration and new uh, perspectives on my art. And um, just today, uh, no, yesterday, I made a landscape. 
Woohoo, no portraits. <laughs> I have no idea, but I just need to find new forms and new yeah. uh, materials. So I'm not sure yet where this will go, but it, it's a good moment to, yeah, uh, bring the new elements and a new inspiration back to my art and back to my business. Yeah. So, um, who knows? Maybe it will be landscapes. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. And yeah. I love the way you said, Karim, that you are investing in your creativity. You're nurturing yeah. your art itself. And very often we think, oh, you know, that's total luxury. And, you know, no. you, should, you, you are nurturing your art and soul and yeah. uh, finding inspiration. And I think that's just so important to have the input so that there can be output. Yes, yes. And I think when it comes to advices or tips, maybe that would be your next question yes. but it's really um yeah taking yourself seriously and the the investment in yourself your art your business sometimes um it can be um how do you say um, big amounts um and you need to have some money but um for me everything i invest it came back to me in one way or another way and um, so it helped me a lot. Otherwise, I, if I never choose to follow your course, I, I wouldn't have been here where I am today. Mm -hmm. And it's also for the other investments I did. It, it just, yeah, it helps you growing. Yeah, to take the step and, and yeah. to own the space. You know, also like you were saying, you had to clear out that Smith, the, 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 that little space and put your paints down and do the work you set out. I know that you yeah. said, a day you know in your week that was your yeah. day you committed to that and then from there you yeah. start bearing fruit yeah and, uh, and it's all those uh, sometimes that just so small the steps you can take but they will bring you yeah on places you wouldn't have yeah couldn't believe you would be there yeah wonderful well well done for all those uh, bold steps and uh, just wonderful to see how you're growing and developing and uh and your art so it's just very inspiring um other artists uh, karin that you'd like to uh, share uh, that we can follow along and uh, see where you get your inspiration from yeah well one of my newest inspirations is margaret soraya mm -hmm. um she's a, a wonderful photographer of uh, the oceans and the seas in scotland mainly mm -hmm. um uh, Marlene Dumas is an, uh, the South African artist, uh, it's an inspiration, you know her. <laughs> um, Armando, uh, Rinke uh, uh, thought the same. Um, Yvonne van Bergen, a Dutch um, intuitive portrait painter. She's also an inspiring, uh, inspire she inspires me. Um, and another Dutch painter, Wendel Moedelangerak. You can find her on Instagram. Yeah, there's so many. There's inspiration everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So many people, yeah. yeah if you're open, uh, open to see and to, uh, to absorb. Yes. Uh, thank you and to you. Time. You are also very Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. so wonderful just to see how you took that course and you just... You just took it seriously and you started doing the work. And, you know, it's just, I'm just so thrilled to see the, the fruit of uh, your labor. That's, as you say, you put in, then you can get out. So, uh, well done. I just do the framework. You have to do the work. You, you know, you spend your energy and your time and you invest it and uh, it's paying off. So, uh, well done. Well done for that. Um, where can we find you, uh, Karine? You said Instagram, that's the space. And then yeah. you have a website. Uh, yes. Uh, can I? Um, I don't know if I can type yeah. something right now, but it's Karin Borsch.nl. Yeah, when you come into the back into yeah. the, yeah. you can just add it quickly in the comments, or otherwise, when the replay is uh, uh, ready, then you can add it there. So people, yes, can I will. yeah. And uh, do you have anything? I would uh, love to go to Milan and see your stuff. Do you have anything closer to home <laughs> coming up? <laughs> uh, not yet. Um, no, there's uh, no. There's uh, in December. December is still Milan, and after that, uh, the new year. I don't know yet. Open. Okay. Well, keep us posted in the community too if you have anything 
for the Dutch people or the German people to go and have a look at, or maybe there are Italians watching, they can go and uh, head over to Milan, then uh, they can follow uh, and see your work live. Karin, thank you so much for uh, for being our, the guest here. And if you have questions for Karin, please just put them in the comment area. Karin, you can just check out and see if there's any specifically uh, any specific questions for you. And uh, all the best with uh, with all your wonderful with your art and with your art business. We'll be following each other and staying connected. Yes, we will. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, pleasure. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Karin. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the session. I just love these uh, first Wednesdays of the month um, that uh, yeah, we can just hear from other artists. Please uh, go and follow them. Rinka, thank you, Elizabeth and Karin, for uh, sharing your art journey, your inspiration. I wish you all the best and uh, we'll see you in the next session or in the Facebook community. Have a good afternoon. <laughs> Bye, guys.